Former U.S. President and current U.S. President-elect Donald J. Trump has sued CBS Broadcasting over the network's 60 Minutes interview with Vice President Kamala Harris because of this clip. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. We are not going to stop pursuing what is necessary for the United States to be clear about where we stand on the need for this war to end. Let's find out just how much editing crosses the line into deceptive practices and election interference. As you know, I'm America's attorney. I'm a seasoned professional with over 23 years of experience being a lawyer and also like 600 videos on YouTube. And today I'm breaking down this lawsuit. So. Let's get started. We're gonna take a different approach in this video and start from the end. Exhibits A, B, and C tell us the story pre-lawsuit. Before filing the lawsuit, Trump's team demanded CBS News immediately provide and publicly release the full unedited transcript of the 60 Minutes interview with Kamala Harris. CBS News responded in Exhibit B. No. They responded saying that Trump and his team's claims that 60 Minutes conceded that they had doctored the interview were incorrect. They explicitly stated 60 Minutes made no such concession, the interview was not doctored, and 60 Minutes did not hide any part of the vice president's answer to the question at issue. Furthermore, the First Amendment fiercely protects these editorial judgments. For that reason, no private right of action exists here. Well. We're about to find out, aren't we? Exhibit C is essentially Trump's pre-suit notice warning CBS under what law they would potentially and now have actually been sued. Now we can mosey our way back to the front of the lawsuit and break down the allegations. Trump's lawsuit claims that CBS violated the Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Consumer Protection Act, and more specifically, provisions of the TBCC at section 17.46A, B, 17.50A1, and 17.50B. Straight from the lawsuit, it says, TBCCC section 17.46A provides false misleading or deceptive acts or practices in the conduct of any trade or commerce are hereby declared unlawful and are subject to action by the Consumer Protection Division. Section 17.46B adds the term false, misleading, or deceptive acts or practices includes causing confusion or misunderstanding as to the source, sponsorship, approval, or certification of goods or services, and causing confusion or misunderstanding as to affiliation, connection, or association with, or certification by another. DTPA section 17.50A1 provides, a consumer may maintain an action where any of the following constitute a producing cause of economic damages or damages for mental anguish. One, the use or employment by any person of a false, misleading, or deceptive practice that is A, specifically enumerated in a subdivision of subsection B of section 17.46 of this subchapter, and B, relied on by a consumer to the consumer's detriment or any unconscionable action or course of action by any person. So does Trump's allegation of CBS's editing fall under these statutes? Oh, look, I'd love to play with you a little bit and wool the issue around some and make it seem ambiguous, but I just can't bring myself to do it. These claims in this lawsuit are childish and stupid. And the irony is thick. On paper, Trump is a huge proponent of the First Amendment. He seems to scream First Amendment as a defense to all of the criminal charges against him for the false things that he has in the past said. And on some of those issues, his First Amendment defense has been correct. But the First Amendment is not a weapon that allows you to say things which are themselves part of a criminal transaction. Nevertheless, Trump goes to the well of the First Amendment over and over. And I'm surprised that while gazing at his reflection there, that's a narcissism joke if you can't tell, he's never noticed that the First Amendment would also allow editors of news outlets to freely choose what statements that a politician has said or allegedly has said to put out there to the public or not. So let me say it another way. The freedom that CBS has to edit an interview however they see fit is very, very broad. And you don't even have to get to the First Amendment, potentially, to get to the same result in this case. Because the statute under which Trump sued, the Texas Business and Commercial Code, seeks only to regulate commercial speech. That is, speech made in pursuit of the interests of the sale of goods or services. And it says so right in the act. And because what 
Harris was doing was running, albeit unsuccessfully, a campaign for political office, it does not fall under the statute. The idea that Trump would seek to use a statute to manipulate the editorial choices of the news agency is, well, straight crazy and ironic and foolish and also very, very on brand. Moreover, Trump is not a consumer under this act. He was not deceived in any way by the editing. And that's even assuming that his allegations about the editing were true. He was a political opponent of Harris's and he didn't rely on the alleged editing to his detriment. It's not like he believed Harris. Trump's lawyers, the lawyers who filed this incredibly stupid lawsuit, they know that this is not a valid claim. It is, however, a valid publicity stunt. There is an element in every case between litigants that ever comes to court that's necessary in order for a plaintiff to have a claim against a defendant. There must be some harm. For those of you who have not really paid attention to the news this week, Trump just completely kicked Harris's butt in the election. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. He wasn't harmed in any way by this editing of the interview. I mean, I guess he views becoming president again as being worth $10 billion because that's how much he sued CBS for. That's pretty far out there. Anyway, in a couple of months, he'll be sworn in again, and then he will, I guess, get his $10 billion? Or whatever he thinks that being president is worth. And since Harris didn't win the election, and since she isn't going to lead an armed mob to attack the Capitol, to prevent her from certifying the results of the election against her. I'm not gonna analyze what this case would have looked like had she won the election too soon. The case would have been more interesting and it would have gotten dumber and dumber over time, but look, it didn't happen. The lawsuit was filed last week on the last day of October, well before the election. So now that Trump has won the presidential election, does he have a suitable claim for election interference? Has he actually sustained an injury as a consumer? Especially one that's approximately $10 billion? Well, look, you already know the answer to that is, haha, no. But let me just throw in one additional wrinkle. The lawsuit never says that Trump watched the edited video. He doesn't even bother to allege that he saw the video. But watching the video and being duped by it, that's the only way that you could possibly have a valid claim if you sued a business, not a First Amendment protected news outlet. Of course, Trump wasn't watching the Harris interview on CBS. We know this. He only watches Fox News. But what are your thoughts on Trump's lawsuit against CBS? Do you believe the network's edits truly constitute deceptive practices or election interference? Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Drop your pro se opinion down below and let me know what you think. And don't forget, while you're down there, to lawyer up with me, America's attorney, and hit that subscribe button because I've got more videos coming very soon. See ya. Point four six of this subchapter, and I said chapter. It is a valid publicity stump. Stunt. It is a valid publicity stunt.